Good morning, morning, everyone. It's a Todd and Aaron morning stream on GetPartDaily.com. This is my wife, Aaron. She's sick. That's because our children are a petri dish of disease and death, and their only job is to touch all their other little friends and smear their secretions all over their face, and then come home and cough in line. That's pretty much the plan. Once again, just remind you, we are the award-winning Todd and Aaron morning stream here on Gephardt. Uh, good morning. It's Monday. It is. I got to right off the bat. I got to well go to the mountain uh, mountain cam and see if you, we can see the inversion. It's Not so you, much. It's brought to you by Utah Credit Approval. The it's, inversion. It's more than the inversion is. Well, no. The smog is not brought to you by Utah Credit Approval, but our morning mountain cam is. The fog is really bad on I-15. Did you go through it? Yes. It was quite bad. It is. It horrific. was very mysterious and eerie, though. Like I was in London or something, except for I'm in the Metropolitan West. The uh, other than that, it was the same. The I've never heard of that designation before. Um, we are um, set up for seven days of the inversion building. That's lucky because I've always enjoyed air I can chew, so, so that'll be good. So the kids' warnings, the kids, our school won't let the kids out at some point uh, when I they're know, exercising. So and a lot of people are going, well, it's California's fires. No, it's not. We'll show you why later because that smoke is going out to sea. We're going to show you that coming up. Uh, Utah firefighters, uh, they left on Friday, didn't they? they Thursday. Took, but they, Thursday. Yeah, and they took off. They were there by Friday. And the thing Touch is, this base. is the second time they've been down there. I know. And they're going, we hope we're home by Christmas, but you know, whatever. They're hoping. So anyway, they're, uh, right now they're, they're, they're at the beck and, beck and call of uh, the Cal firefighters. And so they said, look, what do you want? We're just standing here ready to go. Right now they're working on this whole big group of compost that's out there that was actually on fire that they didn't know. Oh, man. So they're taking care of that. And he says, what are you going to do afterwards? And he goes, whatever they tell us to. We're all, because the brotherhood and all that stuff. So. Now, I'm just curious, did they ever find out it started? It was, a, like, lightning-based, or was there, the, I mean... The only thing that I read this morning was it started close to a home, which is a horrible thing to think that you might have been responsible for, for the burning half the second state. largest fire in the history of California. Oh, man. But they did say, I did read this morning, that it did start near a house. Wow. I can't even imagine being responsible so, for that. You have that. Um, do you want to show? Is this where we're going to show the? Well, pitch? this is incredible. The forest, fi- the the wildfires were so big, they actually could be spotted from space. This is from the NASA satellites, um, and if you take a look at that, you can actually track the red spots are showing the heat sensor of where the fires were. Mm-hmm. You can see the smoke going out, to see. There's some. But if you take now, take a look at the next, now. see that that kind of shows you where the. The fires are with the red dots and the smoke is actually going out to sea. But if you take a look at this is the part that's overwhelming to me. Look how long look mm-hmm. how long the fire line, the fire line is along the coast. It's like how many of those can you fight at once? I mean, they're everywhere. And once you stop with ooh, and then it gets really crazy. And this is when the fi- the smoke's shooting straight up. That is but look nuts. at that. And they're trying to fight all of these fires at once. And that's the part that's a killer is, is that I don't even know how you manage that. And this is how fast it, it changes. And there's the thermal imaging. Take a with, look at with, that. with the winds and stuff, they had one 15% uh, contained, and now it's down to 10. And the Santa the Ana's, everyone, oh, they're beautiful and they're romantic. And, it's, and then Who they says come that? in and actually they like them. But that was one of the, that's one of the shots from one of the NASA fire ha- uh, towers. Take a look at that. I mean, it, it really does knock you speechless because it's the sheer impossibility of fighting that many things, and, and literally they're at the point where they're just trying to race ahead of them long enough to get somebody to get everybody out of the area. Explain the, the fi- fire towers. Fire towers, most of them aren't used anymore because you've got all the satellite imaging from space and right. you've got so many other things, but um, they still use fire towers to do some of some of the close-range stuff. Oh, so you're talking the real fire towers. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because my friend did that in Maine. Yeah, well... This is uh, completely aside, but I gave this to Todd for Christmas one year, and we have yet to use it. But there's actually a lot of the fire towers that are now been put out of commission that you can actually go and rent and go up and, like, spend the night there. Some you have to snowmobile in. Some you can, like, hike in or snowshoe mm-hmm. in. Some have little fireplaces. But it's really cool. So you get to be on top of this gigantic tower looking out over a huge my, amount of my, forest. My, it's really romantic. My friend, really cool. became, my friend became a hermit. Because he was way out there, and there were locked gates to get in and stuff, and then he went up, and basically you had uh, uh, towers set on mountaintops uh, around the different areas, and one guy would see the fire, radio it in, the other guy would see the fire, and the third guy would see the fire, and they could triangulate and tell you where the fire was. 
you know, back in old school days. But Except for you really didn't have friends stopping by with a case of beer just to say hi. He was, so when we showed up, it was like... He was whittling long it, beards? It's like we found someone on a deserted island. Poor guy. All right, this part is just, this. as a mom, this part kills me because I think every parent is just prays that your kid's not the one who gets bullied or even worse, bullies. But this video went viral yesterday um, and uh, I got a chance to talk to the mom. I asked for permission to use this video. And she said that Keaton asked to record this video after he had to have me pick him up again because he was afraid to go to lunch. My kids are by no stretch perfect and as and homies is all boys. They come getting in mud and running around messing it up. But by all accounts, he's a great kid at school. Talk to your kids. I've even had friends of mine tell me that their kids were only nice to him to get him to mess with people. We all know how it feels to want to belong, but then a select few know how it feels to not belong to anyone. So listen to this little boy. He's been set up by people he thought were his friends. He has no one he feels like he can count on at school, and this is what he said. Just out of curiosity, why do they bully? What, what's the point of it? Why do you find joy in taking innocent people and finding a way to be mean to them? It's not okay. What do they say to you? They make fun of my nose. They call me ugly. They say I have no friends. What'd they do to you at lunch? Put milk on me and put a hand down my clothes. They bread at me. Is it just you? Yep. Or is it other kids too that feel that way? Say it's other kids too. How's that make you feel? I don't like that they do it to me and I for sure don't like that they do it to other people because it's not okay. People that are different don't need to be criticized about it. It's not their fault. <laughs> but if you are made fun of, just don't, don't let it bother you. Just stay strong, I guess. It's hard. <laughs> but it'll probably get better one day. Oh, man. Does that just break your heart? His words, it's not okay. Well, and, and they made fun of his face, and they said, I guess his nose is a little flatter, but they said, right. you retard, and just ugly, horrible things. And, I mean, you hear this from this boy, and I think the only thing worse to me than having a child who would be bullied would be to get the call that my kid was the one who was doing it. Oh, that would end fast. It would, it would crush me to think that my kid could be that cruel. But this is the thing that I loved, and I absolutely love this. Number one, on Facebook, there was this massive outpouring. I mean, literally over a million messages of love and support for this kid. Right. And on Twitter, every celebrity saw this. And, I mean, like all the stars of The Walking Dead said, would you like us to come down and take care of somebody for you? Because we will. But every single star stood behind me and said, look, I'm your friend. I'm your buddy. And he says, Don't, you know, you stand tall. You hang in there. And they were all trying to send the message that right. it sucks to be a bully. And I keep thinking maybe to that. To be bullied. That maybe... To be a bully, it's you no. suck to be one. But may, I keep hoping that maybe that kind of pe popular peer pressure from an actual celebrity might make them think twice. I don't know. But my personal favorite was Chris Evans, who plays Captain America, who is so adorable. And he said, stay strong, Keaton. Don't let them turn you cold. I promise it gets better. While those punks at school are deciding what kind of people they want to be in this world, how would you and your mom like to come to the Avengers premiere in L.A. next year? Wow. Yes. Wow. But I absolutely love it. It makes me like these, some of these people even more that they were like right on it and totally giving them support. And you know, they're just scrolling through their phones. This is the cool part. They're just like, oh, look at this video. Oh, and people are moved. I mean, everyone. I'm not talking about just the celebrities. How could you not be? Oh, I mean, my oh, gosh. Sweet kid. It's like, <sighs> so, all in right. any case, I. I don't know. It comes back to all of us talking about it, but they, you know, a lot of people know the signs to look for for bullying, but it's. It, it's also important to look for signs that your kids are bullying. And one of the big things that they are, saw are, 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 being, are being the bullies. Being a bully. Sorry, I should okay. have said that better. Because one of the things that he pointed out in this is people who he thought were his friends right. went along with peer pressure and they basically turned on him. Right. And it's like you've got to decide are, to tell your kids. It's like you can't be a bystander. Yeah. You can't be on the side and then right. just drift. you you got to be... you got to stand... John Sahajan this. and Eddie Beauchamp were my bullies. You still remember them? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I did find out that uh, well, Eddie Beauchamp was in prison. I guess he started early. Yeah. But so I still anyway. re still remember their names, still remember their first and last names. I could tell you where they lived as well. Interesting. Because you never forget. 
I have been working very hard at this new thing, and here I understand that a mom is trying to get rid of Elf on a Shelf. Are you kidding? Christy Hines is my hero. She's out from Illinois, and she started, like, okay, I'll do Elf on the Shelf, and she did it last year, and every right. single night she switched and did it. Which I'm trying to learn how to do. You know, and she went through all the stuff on Pinterest to find adorable new ways to present the Elf on the Shelf. And anyway, this year she did it for two days, and she went, you know, I can't take this anymore. So she shared the uh, Facebook post and attached a letter from Santa, who had written a letter to her two daughters telling her that Elf on the Shelf was retiring this year. And it says, greetings from the North Pole. I'm very busy preparing for Christmas, but I did want to take you the time, the time to write you an important letter about your scout elf, George Elf. I think you'll be pleased as peppermint to know that George Elf has had a very, very special Christmas wish this year. He has enjoyed you three girls so much over the years that his only wish for Christmas was to be a real toy in your house. You see, scout elves who fly back and forth to the North Pole every night to report to me are something kind of new. When your mommy and daddy were little, they didn't have scout elves like George Elf. <laughs> and then a few years ago, I had a great idea and wanted to try using scout elves to help me decide who was on the nice list and who right. was on the naughty yeah. list. George Elf and all the other scout elves have been a big help. And some scout elves love their job and just want to keep flying back and forth every night. <sighs> but like people, each elf is different. And George Elf wanted more than anything just to be played with like a real toy. Oh, so he's not going to be placed everywhere. He saw everywhere. the excitement and happiness in your eyes every right. morning when you found him. And he wanted you to be able to touch him and play with him just like your other toys. So he asked if I could make his wish come true this Christmas. And I said, yes. So I love making Christmas wishes come true. So George is just going to be a toy and he won't be moving around the house anymore. Love, Santa. I'm, I'm a little disappointed. Are you kidding? This is the first year that I... This woman is my hero. She decided not to fall into peer pressure. So you don't appreciate what I've been doing for our children this Christmas Yuletide see the Christmas thing. You haven't noticed Zoe flinching every morning when she wakes up? This is how it works. You move the elf, right, and you put them someplace, and it has a meaning to it. And uh, so uh, we got two of them on our doorstep uh, last week, and so thank you, whoever. Here, here's a picture of the two, the two good-looking elves. So I got those, and I'm like, okay. So I read a little bit, and I got some ideas on Pinterest, and then I said, screw those; those are boring. So I started doing this, uh, and okay, that, <coughs> not probably the spirit that they were meant. More youthful hijinks, being, right? right. Yeah. And then there was yeah. this one, uh, because you just the, see the. I'm getting on track. I, I know I'm a little off, but. And then I went uh, with this next one. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I must have been drinking. I'm not sure. Uh, very uncomfortable seating. Uh, and then that totally off. I know. The wheels came off on this one. Uh, my latest. Uh, That's kind of mean-spirited there, babe. It might be. Yeah. I think the next one is a celebration, though. Oh, no, not that one. <laughs> that's, that's a nut. The, that's a butt cracker. That's a butt cracker. That's a butt that's cracker. That's what that is. But... I think I redeem myself. Does he have a lighter in his hand? Of course he does. He's got a he's got a yeah. lighter. Someone had to be attached to the bottle rockets. Yes, he's got a lighter. Mm. Okay. So I think I think I'm getting there. I think I am getting there. And uh it's it's uh it's uh, just another test of the holiday spirit in my heart. Not my brain, evidently. All right, coming up, um, Google, I don't understand this, but Google's going to tell you where to get off of a train or a bus. Or Let's something. go to Daisy. She's in the Get Part Daily Newsroom. She's brought to you by Utah Credit Approval. Bad things happen to good people, but you can get your credit back on track and get a reliable auto. Give them a call, 801-921-9819. Also by Brio Technologies. They are your experts in lighting, sound, and video. You can bring your business to the next level with BrioAudioVisual.com. And also by All Utah Plumbing, Heating, and Air, where John is waiting to help you out with a $69 special to make sure that your furnace is ready to go for winter. AllUtahPlumbing.com. Good morning, Daisy, my dear. What's going on? Thanks, Todd and Aaron. Hello, everyone. Here are the headlines for Monday, December 11th on GetHeartDaily.com. Unified police are searching for three suspects in the shooting death of a 30-year-old Taylorsville man. It happened Sunday morning in a ground floor apartment at 4330 South, 742 West. 
Police say a woman suspect knocked on the victim's door while two male accomplices waited around the corner. When the victim opened the door, the two men rushed in, inside and shot him. Images of the woman suspect were actually caught by a surveillance camera. Anyone with information is asked to call uniform police. Police in St George are asking for the public's help in finding the driver who struck and killed a female pedestrian Saturday night. The hit-and-run incident happened about 8 p.m. when the woman, who was thought to be in her 60s, was pushing a cart along Dixie Drive. Police say the vehicle that hit her likely has a damaged front end. Anyone who was in the area at the time or who has any information about this incident is asked to call St George Police. And Unified Police said it appears impaired driving led to a single car crash near 7676 South Holden Street Sunday afternoon. Police say the 20-year-old driver was speeding when he slammed into a tree before ricocheting into a chain-link fence. The driver was rushed to hospital in critical condition. A passenger escaped unharmed. And time now for a look at the Wasatch Front weather brought to you by our righteous new sponsors at Brea Technologies, Utah's number one audiovisual experts. Well, here we are just two weeks shy of Christmas and Mother Nature continues to be hot tardy with the freaking snowfall. Highs this week will be in the low 40s while nighttime temps will linger in the 20s. The chance for snow for at least the next three days is a big fat goose egg. Zero, zilch, nada, ain't going to happen anytime soon. That's it for now. For more local news 24-7, go to getparkdaily.com. For now, Todd and Aaron, back to you. The, you know someone who can fall asleep at, at just will, just like, I'm going to sleep now and uh, take one? That used to be me. Used to be you. I could fall asleep standing up when I had the twins, yeah. Used to be you. Um, and I had a friend in uh, college and after college who uh, could do that. He would just, I don't know if it was narcolepsy, but he could just seriously, you know, if he had something he could just lean on, and he could sleep with his neck not resting on anything. I always thought that was wow, like an that amazing, amazing skill. Except when he put his mind to it, he would go out when we were at work together in uh, Washington, D.C., and we'd get on the subway there. Um, there was at least a dozen times that he ended up at the last stop of the train <laughs> because... Because he just fell asleep. and He'd, he'd be getting off going, don't fall asleep. Yeah, he'd no he'd ignore, ignore all the announcements <coughs> and stuff, and he'd end up at the, you know, where they wash the trains. And that is so they sad. they clean them, and he was the, on there. Maybe he needed just to get a job at the end of the line. It would have been easier It would him. have been easier. So Google Maps has come up. Actually, it's kind of, excuse me, kind of an old um, version of something that they had, but it will actually wake you up on your bus route or your... Or your train route. Wow! It will, it will keep like track. Like just do a little alarm. Yeah, it'll it'll keep track of you, and it suddenly knows that you're on the subway, and then it will follow just like it does on the road, which is frightening, by the way, uh, and tell you where you are, and it gives you a little heads up when you're about there, and then you can stand up and get off the train like you're supposed to. But that's really a good idea. But that's crazy on a subway. Because trust me, your friend is not the only one who's done that. And it's scary to wake up where you don't know. You know, I did it once and I ended up in Foggy Bottom, D.C. It's a stop. It is. I'd forgotten. Not that. with a Foggy Bottom. Foggy Bottom. I remember that now. I'd forgotten. So anyway, so that's that's a good thing for someone. Hey, um, we wanted to thank you. Got a little uh, Facebook message from the people we sent to Christopher's uh, over the weekend because they had won. It's our way to thank you for watching. Uh, we are planning a celebration, by the way, because we have... We're getting to a milestone that we're very, very excited very to share, proud so we've got and, lots of treats. And you helped us do that, so we want to send you to Christopher's. All you have to do is sign oh. up, is go to... This is very easy. Just go to one of our Facebook pages. You're watching the show today. Drop a comment. Um, you can do it on Gephardt Dailies or Gephardt Approves or the Todd and Aaron Facebook page. Just mention that you like Christopher's and you're automatically entered. End of the week, we draw a name. It's probably yours. You and three friends go down, have dinner, walk around the holiday lights, it's an amazing evening. Everybody's happy. All right, so coming up, we have a story about well, make, doing your confession to a guy who used to be in the KKK. It's next.
Todd and Aaron's Morning Stream, brought to you by Utah Credit Approval. Bad things happen to good people helping you on the road to good credit with just the right car. Yeah. Go to utahcreditapproval.com or call them at 801-404-7201. Also brought by Columbus Travel. Columbus Travel has an epic sale on cruises through the 21st of October. You can get a hotel and everything you can imagine just for less than the price you would of simple airfare. You have to talk to them first at columbusvacations.com. And all Utah Plumbing. Your home deserves the best 24-hour emergency service at allutahplumbing.com. Did you know you can catch the Todd and Aaron Morning Stream any time of the day or night on Facebook, YouTube, and SoundCloud and GephardDaily.com? Apply today and drive away. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's John with all Utah plumbing, heating, and air. Give us a call so that you don't get cold delivered. John scares me sometimes. Thanks, John. Um, so, so, so the environmentalist. Now tell me, t first of all, where is this happening? Well, this is down in the Bears Ears National Monument area, and there's been a massive amount of, of discussion one way or another a lot of arguments, and, right. and it is heart stopping. You take a look at this. There's things there that are thousands upon thousands of years old. It is a pr absolutely precious resource. Can it I is. tell you a story, really quick story? Of course. And they think it's in this area, but uh, they wouldn't know. There was a, a helicopter pilot, and uh, he was making a run for some reason through this valley or whatever, and he found he found ruins that no one else has seen, and they are massive. And he got so excited about it. So he clicks his GPS, right, and he marks it. And then he thought to himself, I can't let anybody know about this. I can't let them know about the location. So what he did is he went and he got scientists. So he put four scientists in the back of his helicopter. He blindfolded them and then put bags over their heads like they were hostages. No way. And he flew them there. And he did circles before he got there so they couldn't time it and figure out how fast the helicopter was. He was serious. And so he and his co-pilot land the helicopter, and they say, you have 16 hours. Take pictures, do and what you want to do. And they went crazy. And there were tools leaning up against the walls. There were baskets with still corn cobs in them. I mean, it was fire rings. Everything was there. And scientists went crazy. And then they went, okay, come on bags back on your head. I hate to say that, but I'm 100% behind that. Isn't that awesome? I mean, I used to... Such a great story. No, I used to scuba dive down to Lake Powell before they um, before the silt moved up and, and covered all the underwater caves, but there were right. some that you could take off your tank, which was a little scary, and kind of wiggle through, and you could right. go into the underwater cave, and there were still the Anasazi paintings. Right. And all of that's gone now, of course, because the water's come up, but, you know, all of those things are so precious, and they're just disintegrating or they're disappearing because people are like, I'm going to carve this out and put it in my living room. Right. I mean, so I can't blame him for wanting to go, this will stay untouched because it's so gorgeous. And, and the sci I, I don't know where the story goes from there because you know the scientists say, we, we don't want to do anything, but we want to go back and take more pictures because it had so many different things that represent that they haven't seen or they had questions about about the staircases they used to go up yeah and yeah, yeah. Place, always start in the how could you foot. you could build these thriving communities in a place where there was no water and how was, are they doing and it, it yeah. was so detailed that they had so many answers anyway so uh they're raising money for, for well, the project it's, uh, sorry it's, i went offline there no it's friends of cedar mesa and they're trying to raise three hundred and ten thousand dollars. they want to buy an old bar in bluff to convert into an education center um, so that they could educate and people sure. about Bears Ears. Sure. It's a visitor center. Yeah. And so the Facebook promotion is that for a pledge of $10,000, the donor receives a guided hike with Josh Ewing, the executive director, to secret sites that oh. nobody else has seen. Well, that's kind of like we were just talking about. Prestigious inside view. Right. That would give you a chance to see stuff that nobody else would see. Okay, well, that's kind of interesting. Um, well... Except for one thing, um, all the two of the board members went, I'm really repulsed by this because this is everything that we're against, that the privileged elite get to go in and mess around in areas that we've promised would remain pristine. Right. A campaign has its cost, but I'm not willing to have a scene as an organization willing to sell secret sites to $10,000 uh, donors. And so Josh is like, well, no, we think it's all right. But it does seem to me to be completely against everything that they're trying to do, Slightly right? off the mark? Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay, so in any case, if you were planning to donate $10,000 for your secret super special hike, the uh, Division of Wildlife, uh, actually, who is it down there? It's the it's a BLM. BLM would like to let you know that the hike is the secret special hike is probably it's illegal. Not going to happen. Yeah, it's probably illegal. So just so you know. All right, so. I hate to see that from an environmentalist group. It's like, thank you. Well, usually they're image. good. I mean, this is just That's so what I mean, stupid. though. You don't yeah. want to have that bad image. It's, All right, this is the season of love and forgiving. This one's a little tricky. Okay, I'm ready. Now, this is, is this a, a moral dilemma? This is a multi-layered story, so okay. you might want to go with me on a flow chart here. Okay. So, back in 1977, mm -hmm. there was a couple who were newlyweds. Okay. Um, they came home from their vacation to find a cross burning on their lawn. Okay. Um, this was in Virginia. Um, the torment continued mm. many times. It was obvious they were a target of the KKK. Okay. They were not receiving any help from the local police at the time. Okay. And uh, it was a nightmare, as you can only imagine. Um, there was an angry man, William Atchison, who had come home from Vietnam and decided to turn his rage and hate into racism okay. and focus his aggression and hate on African-American couples like this couple. So he lived in the same house, uh, in the in same the, town. The same area, yes. Okay. So here's the weird part. Um... Now that we're moving to today, which is from 1977 is what? Now we're 30 years later, right? Yeah. It turns out that uh, Atchison has turned into a Catholic priest. He became a Catholic priest less than 10 years after being so the KKK heavily involved in the KKK. Turned into a priest. Yeah. Okay, all right. And all right. so this didn't come to light until literally this year that he was still wanted because he had actually been caught, taken to court. Right. And he, they said, you are required to pay them $23,000 for the damage that you've caused to their home, an apology letter for what you've done. But he was also caught up in other felony cases, went to prison, right. and never paid them the money or the reparations. Right. So it surfaced, and the Atchison's found out, excuse me, the um, Butler's found out that he was now a Catholic priest, and they contacted so. the diocese saying, do you know who right. you have right. in your group? Well. Um, they made a statement then going, oh, well, okay, he, he, he needs to do something about this. Now, at this point, you're thinking, okay, forgiveness, forgiveness. Well, he didn't ever ask for forgiveness for the 25 years he's been a Catholic priest. He only asked for forgiveness once he was caught, and he sent them a handwritten apology letter with a 20, the $23,000 that he owed them right. from 30 years ago. Right. And... Um, here, so I guess the frustrating thing is that at first they felt like they didn't even want to open the letter. And the, and the church was kind of going, well, we, you know, we sent it. So, and they finally opened it and they read through it and they said, okay, we see that. But we also want the extra $9,600 it cost us to have an attorney to defend ourselves in court against the man who, who did this to us. And we would also like the $68,000 in interest that we've been waiting for mm. for this apology for the last 30 years. Mm. So... Um, Here's, so here's our question. Um, Did the priest go back to jail? No. So here's the question. Do we forgive the priest because he has sent the reparation money in an apology letter? Are they going too far for demanding extra money? Um, do we not forgive the priest because the only reason he apologized is because he got caught? So this is the this is the dilemma for me. It's like if he had become a Roman Catholic priest and then said, "Oh my gosh, what have I done? I have to go back and do these reparations. Right. Do what the court has ordered me to do." I could see it. Right. And, but the fact that he didn't do it till he was caught is the next question. But on the other hand, now you've got the butlers going, "Well, no, that's not enough, and we're going to sue the church if you don't give us more." And so, do you see my dilemma? Now I'm in this middle of this thing of like, who? I've seen other stories. Where people were, and they still have the tattoos, they still have a swastika on their on their body, you know, and and they've gone through, and and a lot of the people who have come out of that, um, who have smartened up, actually go and have the tattoos masked. They do a tattoo over that and make mm -hmm. it another tattoo, you know, a different thing. And they work with kids, and they work, and I've seen this. Some people just go back into society and have learned a lesson, and they move on, which I have no problem with, and I think that's a great thing. Or they help other people who are, are, are in the KKK or the in white supremacists and stuff like that. Um, the thing about him being a priest and stuff. Um, and that was another question the butlers rose because they are devout Catholic. They went, did you know this man was a high-ranking member of the KKK right. when you inducted him into the ministry? Right. Because there was the no. The answer would be no. 
Yeah, I'm assuming, yeah, certainly. I, the thing I think that, that, and I would like to be a person who forgives people. And when I see people do that to someone uh, who murdered one of their family members and stuff, I am nowhere close to being able to do that. I think they're And amazing. I think if you look at the butlers and them having a burning cross and having to sleep with an eye open Repeated all the time. Repeated torment, yeah. And, you know, whatever they else they did to these poor people and painted their house and their cars and all that stuff. I think you forget about what kind of impact that has on a family. And then do you not have kids? Do you not have kids because of an a-hole who's out there burning a cross on your front yard? Can you imagine they have control of you not having kids because you don't want to raise kids in that environment? I don't forgive them. But that's me. That's me. And it's the whole bully thing, isn't it? This is really the whole bully this is, thing. This is the grown-up extra terrifying bullying thing of now we, we actually have access to explosives and inflammatory materials. Then it gets a whole new level. But I don't know. You're usually, to be honest, you're usually far more forgiving than I am. Ty not, calls me Satan Claus because I have my list of people that I never forget, ever. Not when and it comes like to the, the crisp, kids. It's like the crisper of hate. You know, you keep your hate nice and fresh in the crisper so that you can open it up and be outraged again. And Todd doesn't tend to do that, and I do. So I'm here. I can hear you. That you surprises know. me. I would think you would be the one to go, I could find a way to forgiveness. No. And I would be the one going, I'll never forgive no. you. No, if you've affected my family, no. Screw you. I am. Yeah, affecting the family is where it starts getting to. I'm going to take you back. Okay. Take you back to a, a nicer time. Not a nicer time. Uh, I'm going to take you back to... Um, the story about Charlie Brown's Christmas. Charlie Brown's Christmas. Obviously, we know all the story, don't we? It's Just a beautiful story. 1965 is when it came out. Charles Schultz became famous because of this, and that's when really? it all kind of. That's that really. That was the big Kickstarter. That I was one of the big that. things because you know now he's just not a comic strip. <coughs> now he's a TV show. So, uh, do you remember aluminum trees? I've never seen them, but I've seen like the old You've 50s commercials. No, but I've seen the old 50s commercials where they they would rotate and oh, they would light up. That's a like, short one. Oh, look, it's a pink one, and yeah, they would be like all these crazy colors and stuff. Yeah, and that I remember the advertiser on the video. I saw it on YouTube a few years ago, and he was like, "It can turn a, a magnificent color wheel that can turn a different." Oh, colors. the color wheel. First of all, that's a short one. The color wheel, regular six foot tree. My Rusty Sullivan, my kid, a friend of mine when I was growing up, and I walked into his living room, and I was just like, oh, it was a beautiful tree, and it had the color wheel like a disco, and it would just rotate around, and it was like blue, orange, green, and it just kept turning, and the tree would turn that color, and you were like, this is unbelievable. It was killed by Charlie Brown. Really? Uh-huh. What do you mean exactly? Well, first of all, the Christmas trees. Uh, dyed goose feathers in 1980. The Germans were making those. Didn't catch yes. on. 1930s, the British company who makes toilet brushes, right? The bristles. They did that. 1955, here it comes. The cost of a tree back then was $80. Wow. 1955. That's equivalent to being $730 for that tree today. Who would buy that? Someone who is living in the future like George Jetson. I guess. So anyway, because of this, oh, you couldn't have, one of the big things is you couldn't put, um, you couldn't put lights. You couldn't be able to put lights on the metal tree because if one of the it things. It gets hot. It, no, it, it could electrify. Oh, there's the, that too, yeah. The entire tree and there goes Fluffy the cat. Um, and wasn't that the reason for the metallic tree that it was supposed to be, it didn't have a fire hazard? I mean, yeah, but that was could, the big push, that, like, hey, this won't be a problem. Hence the color wheel. So, Charlie Brown comes along. And what kind of tree did Charlie have? Oh, and they get it all decorated up and they and then mm, like that. But then they knock on the but then they knock on the tree and it's clang 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 clang. Single-handedly. That's right. Put and it, it the, talked about how that was part of the the crassness of Christmas and the over customer uh, yeah, okay, consumeration and yeah, okay. Yeah, so so they single-handedly Put the, now they're like, oh, they're really cool and retro. You can get them. But put the bit, them out of business. Because everyone saw it as being the, like the symbol of being too greedy at Christmas or too overwhelmed by the materialism. Oh, that's so funny. Thanks, Charlie Brown. Uh, coming up, 
coming up. Oh, I got this thing that I want to show you. Thing. Ten things to never buy. Ten things. We're going to save you so much money. Ten things you should never buy, and that's coming up next. The Todd and Aaron Morning Stream is brought to you by Fink and McGregor, Mortgages Made Simple. If you go to fink-mcgregor.com, you'll find out that you can get a mortgage with a credit score as low as 600. Fink and McGregor, also by The Vein Clinic. If you go to theveinclinic.com, you can schedule an appointment and find out some amazing options for pain-free removal of varicose veins and spider veins. Your legs can look great again with The Vein Clinic. And also by Black Diamond Experts. They're experts in electric, plumbing, heating, and air. And they also have a brand new store up in Ogden now. If you'd like to reach them, you can go to blackdiamondexperts.com. Did you know you can buy a house with a 600 credit score? Really? We have lenders, we have programs, stuff that's come up in the last couple years, 600. Wouldn't you have to have like 50% down or something though? Nope, three and a half percent. Where would you start the process on this? Well, Fink and McGregor has a website, 4minutemortgage.com. Just go there, fill it out, up and running. How long until you get back to us? One business day. Whole thing takes about a month, start to finish. Where do you get the down, though, if you're broke? It can be a gift from family, relative, significant other, even your work. Gift, huh? Yeah. You know what that makes me wish? Makes me wish I had friends with money. <laughs> All right, uh, thank you very much for being with us. It's the Todd and Aaron Morning Stream, GetPartDaily.com. Really, I think our tableau is just not up to snuff. Where's the, where are the packages? Where are the? I'll bring all the good stuff tomorrow. Oh no, it's I was it, more obsessed. It's under there. The fruit cake is under there. Oh man. Yeah. It's just. We just we try to hide it. It's malevolently just under the surface like it an is. oil slick. Things you should not buy. Are you ready? Well, I mean, realistically, this is stuff that you are never going to use. It is never going to be useful. Or it is so painfully obvious that you could do something cheaper that it really is outrageous. Potpourri. Don't buy it. Usually people end up putting it in their bathrooms anyway. And just there's no real use for potpourri. And it's expensive. You've ever seen bags of potpourri? They're like twenty bucks. And oh, and don't buy those those big things of pine cones that are cinnamon in these. I like those. I don't agree with you on that one. Some of the stores have the bright idea, like Winco, and they leave them outside the store so they don't kill you. All right, number two. Number two is baby shoes. Why? Why baby shoes? Your babies don't walk. When the twins were born, we had the cutest, we oh, had yeah. the cutest, cutest sales director, and she bought them both these awesome little baby vans. Name, name brand. Which they never, had to be 50 bucks each. And never, never walked wore. on. Never wore. Never. Number three, credit monitoring. Well, here's the interesting thing about credit monitoring. What they're saying is, is that the only thing it tells you is once it's actually happened. Yeah, you. And it's falling apart anyway. Right. So you'll still find out because it's already happened. So they're saying that, well, that some companies are charging as much as 50 bucks a month to say, we'll monitor your credit when something bad happens. Oh, you're screwed. Know. You're screwed. The, um, the, uh, it, you know what it's like? It's like the people who have the uh, videos on their front porch and they watch people steal packages. And because of the angle of it, you never see anything but the bridge of the nose and they steal your package, and it goes, yep, look at that video. You he's, were robbed. He stole your package. See ya. And then they post it on Facebook, and it's like, you can see like this much. Wouldn't it be better if they had a lower shop because they're leaning down to pick yeah, it up? Yeah, but then the thought is you're going to see it, and you're going to grab the camera. What if the camera's inside the house, though, and it's like a little window? Or I guess people don't really have many of those. You're like McGruff the crime dog. Greeting cards. Except I'm totally on this. Because greeting cards are something you buy in the store and then you write a message on the dashboard of your car just before you go to whatever party or whatever you're doing. And they're at least $3.50 each and then they run up to like $10 if you get all the fancy ones. And they say it's, it, they said it's insane. They said um, one of the things that you could do is just go to one of the dollar stores and get one of the packs of something pretty because usually it's thank you cards or it's Christmas cards. So just go get something that looks vaguely pretty. You can get a box of 20 for a dollar and you can use it there. But it's true. Have you ever not written a message just on the dashboard of your car? You know, my, my grandfather used to do. He would take a card that they had received, him and his wife, my grandma, and uh, he would scratch out the name and he'd scratch out the event and he'd, 
he'd sign it, and then he'd put the event in, and and I we couldn't figure out if he's just being Scottish. Or if he's having a sense of humor, and I think it was having a sense of humor. Waste not, why not? Yeah. What? I mean, seriously, what do you? Waste oh, here's another item not to buy: scented cat litter. You know why? It doesn't work. There is no scent strong enough to take care of cat. Never, never. Right. Instant microwavable rice. Now think about this. Instant microwave. Put it in the you know microwave, and all of a sudden you've got a half cup of you know yeah. of, of rice. Yeah, I thought the it was... cost works out to five dollars a pound. Rice is one of the world's easiest things to make. Bring a two-to-one ratio of water to boil, reduce heat to barely simmering, stick the rice in, Look and then just you. cook until the water's absorbed. Look at you talk about. It's a dollar a pound, and that's even for the a dollar a pound versus five dollars a pound. <laughs> that's stupid. All right, so coming up. Um... Oh, they also have pre-washed potatoes. Can't you just wash them yourself? They said it also adds an extra $6 a pound if you get the pre-washed potatoes. And then the cereal toddler packs. Pre-washed or pre-peeled? Pre-washed. That's ridiculous. No, let's say we've washed them. Toddler packs are my favorite. Um, oh, the little one cereals. One container of Cheetos, like they do the tiny ones, right. are $27 per pound As for opposed the toddler to, nibbles. That's funny. <coughs> Something not to say to a judge. I mean, really not say to a judge. Really don't, no. A female judge, and that's coming up next. Oh, we're not going to news. What? Am I supposed to go to news? Oh. Paige, go ahead. <laughs> Good morning, Todd Nerrin. Hello everyone, here's a look at our national and world headlines for Monday, December 11th on GebhardtDaily.com. Israeli troops have killed two Palestine protesters and injured 250 others as clashes escalate over Donald Trump's decision to declare Jerusalem Israel's capital. An estimated 3,000 Palestinian protesters clashed with Israeli defense forces at 30 locations across the West Bank and Gaza Strip. Widespread protests are expected again today. And authorities in California have ordered new evacuations for COVID and as the Thomas fire continues to grow. Evacuation orders were issued in Carpentaria and Montecito overnight as the wildfires drew closer to those communities. The Thomas fire has now grown to 173,000 acres. It's about 15% contained. And a new tape of an old interview with Alabama GOP Senate nominee Roy Moore has surfaced. Moore saying that getting rid of constitutional amendments after the 10th Amendment would eliminate many problems in the U.S. Moore made the statement on a conspiracy-based talk show in 2011. The amendments he said he'd like to get rid of include the 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery, the 15th Amendment, which gave all races the right to vote, the 19th Amendment, gave women the right to vote the 24th Amendment, which put an end to poll taxes. Alabama Moore is ahead of his Democratic challenger by about 4%. That's it for now. For more headlines from around the world, go to GebhardtDaily.com. And for now, Todd and Aaron, back to you. All right, Daisy's News is brought to you by Fink and McGregor. Mortgage is made simple if you go to fink-mcgregor.com. Within four minutes, they can give you a whole bunch of mortgage options, and you'll get a call back within the next business day. Also by the Vein Clinic. I just went to the Vein Clinic and had a spectacular job done on my varicose veins on my leg, and I cannot believe how well it went. This is the perfect month to do it, so you can use your cafeteria money. Go to theveinclinic.com for more information. Also by Black Diamond Experts. They're experts in electric, plumbing, heating, and air. You'll be glad you called an expert. Actually, speaking of Black Diamond experts, do you know they have a new place in Ogden now? No, I didn't. They're kind of spreading along the Wasatch Front, and it's funny. Every time I'm driving, literally every time of the day or night, and I know I'm more aware of it now, I always see one of the trucks, and the reason why is they're available 24-7 for emergencies. And so every single one of the, uh, the workers there has got some kind of story about you know being out on Thanksgiving or first thing at 5 o'clock in the morning on Easter or whatever because 
they're there when you need them. But the funny thing is, is that they're licensed, bonded, insured, so you're comfortable having them in your house. And whenever they write you the bid or whatever they write is, is what you pay. There's none of the sneaky overages or the special charges or the, oh, well, we had to add this thing because there's this. No, you, no nasty surprises at the end. And because they do electric, plumbing, heating, and air, they pretty much do everything in the building. So you're good. It's uh, blackdiamondexpert.com. Okay, now, what is this about steel stuff? Um, funny you should mention that. Would you pull that up if you can? Um, basically, it's it's someone here in Salt Lake City. Let's actually start with the judge story because it's really, really funny. Can you guys hold that for a minute? Oh, hang on to that one, guys. What are you going to start with? Um, let's start with the uh, judge story because right, it's hysterical. The, all right, go ahead. Okay. All right. So, judges, they determine your fate. They determine yes. your future. They may be nice. They Respect. may be scary. They might be Ew. a little be in between. They're whichever. scary. They, They're scary. They, they can do that. So... A three-page suspension document uh, was uh, done by the, the direction of the Texas Attorney General. Um, it's part of a sexual harassment allegation. What? And here's the deal. Deputy Lorenzo Contreras was assigned to a judge's court on June 13th. Okay, so you go in, stand there, make sure everybody's calm. During a conversation, he was leaning into her, and they were talking, and, and they were saying something. She's like, he's going to need to be arrested. And then he says... And by the way, once again, because this is all on tape, because everything is taped in a courtroom, he leans into the judge and goes, I bet you'd like being in handcuffs, wouldn't you? Ooh. So he was then threatened. Uh, he was sent to jail for three days for contempt of court. Ooh. And the judge actually said, I'm going to pretend you just didn't say that to me. As a matter of fact, I'm going to say that, forget that you said that at all. And then the deputy, in his infinite wisdom, leaned in and he went, no, I meant the fuzzy kind. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure that uh, that's just the start of his unfortunate the three days in jail. So um, yeah, yeah. The fuzzy kind. So she said no. Is what you're telling me? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So we're gonna jump ahead, guys. Uh, what we're gonna tell talk about is you have some information about Comic Con that you got really excited about, uh, and you hate San Diego now. Well, we should hate San Diego now. We'll tell you next. Todd and Aaron Morning Stream is brought to you by Fink and McGregor. If you go to fink-mcgregor.com, there's a short four-minute quiz, and at the end of it, you can find a whole array of mortgage options, and someone will call you back from Fink and McGregor within the next business day. Also by Utah Credit Approval. Go to utahcreditapproval.com because they know that bad things happen to good people, but that shouldn't stop you from repairing your credit and getting a reliable automobile at utahcreditapproval.com. And also you all Utah plumbing, heating, and air. John has 24-7 service because he knows that emergencies can happen any time of the day or night. And right now they have a $69 special to check out all your heating systems to make sure they're working well. Just go to allutahplumbing.com. Hi, right, welcome back. Todd Darren Morning Stream at GetPartDaily.com. All right, tell them why you're so excited about this. Well, number one, I consider this a partial victory on our side. So Bray, uh, Dan Farr, who founded Sally Comic Con, and Brian Brandenburg um, were testifying down at San Diego. Uh, that this has been an endless, drawn-out lawsuit because San Diego Comic Con was stating we're only the ones who can be called Comic Con. You talk really fast when you talk about this. Well, it irritates me. And so it's like there's a million different outlets across the country that use Comic Con. I mean, it's not like it's sacred. And they even tried to trademark comic-con, and th that got thrown out of court. So I'm not sure how this works. I still don't understand how you trademark words. So what they were saying, essentially, is that people are so stupid, they wouldn't know whether they were going to the San Diego Comic-Con or the Salt Lake Comic-Con. And in reality, what they were really worried about is the fact that they have about 135,000 people who come every year to their Comic-Con, and they get all the cool shows and stuff. Well, we do this twice a year, and we get on an average of 120,000. Each. I don't think if you're so thinking... So we're the second biggest Comic-Con in the country, and so what they're worried about is that we're a threat. So what yeah. they were demanding was um, they wanted $12 million because that they were going to have to do a $9 million reparative advertising campaign to help people understand the difference between the two cons. I'm like... And then they... So on our defense side, they showed that like 99% of people went, no, I totally know the difference between where San Diego is. One's got an ocean. Well, it's got an ocean. It's not really confusing to us. Right. Um, so San Diego Comic-Con did win the suit, meaning that I'm 
and my best understanding is we're not allowed to use Comic-Con anymore. But the jury only gave them $20,000. So their little $12 million gambits out the window. Well, both 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 companies have to put out a huge and amount of I can't money. even imagine how much money they've all spent on um, attorney's fees. So in any case, I think we have to drop Comic-Con, but it doesn't matter. We're still the second biggest in the country. I don't think it's fair to say that uh, the people who go to Comic-Con aren't intelligent enough to know the difference between that uh, that San Diego and Salt Lake, because let's fa let's face it, if you're smart enough to know how to make a purple Power Ranger, you pretty much got a big brain going, and uh, you. Don't I, I I just I think, well, that's kind of been the basis of our entire career. Power rings, power rings. I think that we've that's been the basis of our whole career is that you and I have never thought that. We, we're, we're benefited by underestimating the intelligence of people. I mean, this is true. We've always assumed that you were really smart and you knew what you were doing, and uh, yeah. Do you have uh, Do you have the story about the microwave? Oh, I do. So let's. Go, want the, we're going to go right to that. Okay. All right. These are unimpressed firefighters. So let's start with the wacky prank, shall we? Yes. First of all, there was a wacky prank, and if you see these on YouTube all the time, these are idiot kids who are going. I'm going to get a million hits if I do this, and then I'm going to be like a big star. So what this British guy decided he was going to do right. is he was what going to put that? a straw in his mouth. They were going to stick his head in a microwave and then fill it up with concrete. And so there would be a plastic bag protecting his face and a tube feeding his hair. Wait, 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 wait. Just let that soak in for a second. Just soak So in. it's not a microwave plugged in. No. It's a container holding cement in his head. Yeah. So as okay. you see in his video, it says, I cemented my head in a microwave and uh -huh. emergency services came, nearly right. died. Because right. what they found out is even with the little breathing tube, Not enough. he couldn't breathe. So, of course, they had to call emergency services. Fire department. West Midlands Fire Tweet says, we're seriously unimpressed. Five of our firefighters were tied up this afternoon freeing a YouTube prankster who had been cemented into a microwave oven. We, we strongly suggest you don't attempt to try this at home. So my thought is, at what point do you go, you know what would be funny? Is if I cemented my head. Head. And, I'm, and I'll be microwave. fine because I'll have a breathing tube. At what point did this come into fruition where not even that it, not even that it would enter your head. Where, where would it, it come your from? Head, and then it would yeah. actually go to actually right. happening. Right. And how lucky are they that those guys came fast enough? What about his friends? They this were the, well, like, if you saw the video, they're the ones who were helping him. This is like you go on American Idol and you can't sing. And your friends should be the ones that go, hold it, Todd. You can't sing. And saving you from a bunch of anguish. And this guy is going, I'm gonna, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put my head in the microwave. We're going to fill it up with concrete. And one of his friends should have stepped forward and said, Bob, this is not a good idea. I want you to think about this. But no. Bob has his friends running down getting cement at Ace Hardware and then setting him up for this. You know what the other one is weird that I just saw yesterday? And I've seen this like a bunch of times. Um, there's always a guy and he's sitting at a table with a bong. And he, uh, he takes a piece of the ghost chili, the ghost chili, hottest chili in the universe. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Puts it where he would put the pot. And he lights a lighter, and he. I've never heard of this before. Takes a hit off chili, uh, ghost chili. And yes, that exactly happens. What you're thinking right now. And the the weird thing is, he goes. I've never heard of that. Oh my gosh! And then the thing is, is that you're the camera, okay, like this, and that's the camera he set up. So he goes like this, and he oh, and he coughs right at the camera because. He is so intent on having it caught for YouTube, he mutters the words, what I do to YouTube, what I do for YouTube. And it's like, no one really cares. That just kind of makes you kind of stupid. Like a jackass. And people are doing this. I would never heard of that. I didn't even know such a thing was possible. Yeah, yeah, it is. So you're, you're, taking, you're taking a ghost You're pepper smoking one and, and inhaling it into your lungs. That seems really unhealthy. Once again, a friend should have stepped forward and said, Billy Bob, it's not a good idea. I mean, I've tried the flour one where you're supposed to swallow flour. Cinnamon. Cinnamon, that's right. That's what it was. 
dries your mouth out like this. I guess you remember because I spat it out on you. Yeah. I recall. Don't don't do that. You take a tablespoon just in case you want to. You take a tablespoon of cinnamon, and then you take it and you say, okay, here you go. And that's the challenge. Cinnamon without sugar is kind of bitter. That's not the point. You put it in your mouth, and because it's like talcum powder, you cannot swallow it. It. I've learned this. Dries your mouth out instantly. Now, with your mouth dried out, suddenly you have all this dry cinnamon in your mouth, and at one point you're going to go, <gasps> and then it goes into your lungs like Christmas time, and you uh, basically uh, spend the next uh, 30 minutes, 45 minutes uh, uh, coughing your guts out. My best challenge were the mini marshmallows. Sticking them in your face. I can fit an obscene amount of mini marshmallows in my mouth. I am the winner. That's pretty much my only... That's, that's claim pretty, to fame. That's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah. Right there. Very good. All right. So um, we are going to. Uh, what are we going to leave you with? Uh, with my. Uh, Your elf on the well, shelf. Elf on the shelf. Yeah. So we want to say goodbye. Todd and Aaron morning stream. Don't forget to make a comment today on their Facebook page so that you right. can uh, also enter to win for the Christopher's dinner for four. And share, share, because we'd like to annoy more people, if that's possible. Uh, once again, I've got some comments on Facebook. It's saying, Todd, we think you're on the right track with the elves on a shelf. Thank you, Claire. Uh, and maybe uh, maybe you should uh, go on Pinterest and see some kinder, wonderful, or more kind of. Claire, you are so kind, and apparently you have no idea who my husband is. I'm so sorry. We will leave you today with the... the Thank you for being a good person. I am, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. And you guys have a good day. All right. Bye.